Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got another Hearns knife today. Uh, this guy's not even on the Hearns website. When I first started doing Canadian Cutting Edge, it wasn't long before I reviewed a Hearns knife, uh, the Blazer, which was a really big, robust folder, which is quite cool. And then recently, just a less than a year ago, they put up a new website for their knives. They got all their newest stuff on there. But then they stopped maintaining it, so this guy is not on their newest website. This is the Giant Silkworm. A few people have reviewed it already. I've had it for, I don't know, a month or so. I grabbed this color. It's got the black and the yellow, and so it's got this weird kind of bumpy surface to it. Uh, the other three colors are solid colors, and the milling on the G10 is slightly different on those. So I'll try to show you some good pictures of those. It's a little bit of an upswept blade. 14C 28N stainless steel access lock. It's got a yeah, flared end on the handle, so it really hugs the hand. It just fits into my hand. My hands are just barely into the extra large range, between 9 and 10 in the European men's glove sizes. So if you're looking for a knife like this, even with a forward choil, this thing's not a bad price. I'll have links down below referral links. So please use those links. It's a great way to support the channel and it doesn't cost you a penny extra. Stick around. After the one commercial break that I let YouTube put into my videos, we'll get to the tabletop and take a good close look at this thing. Keep watching. So there's the silkworm. We've got a slight upswept blade sort of because we've got an arced spine on the handle and so it sort of looks like it's coming down a little bit which means that the tip comes up a little bit just ever so slightly a swedge right there on both sides as well nice tip lots of belly a bit of a straight section here since it's an access lock they needed to cut out a section of the steel here anyway because they needed that cut out, it's natural for them to put a bit of a forward choil there. It's not quite big enough for me. It's getting better than a lot, a lot of forward choils are, but for me it's just a little bit too small still. If I were to change this, I would probably mill out some of the G10 to come back a little bit. See, there's a flat section here that's about four millimeters wide, a little bit under an eighth of an inch. I mean, sorry, a little under a quarter of an inch, more than an eighth. And if that, you know, I could sand it back just a little bit and then I'd have enough room in there. So it's an easy fix on my own to make that forward choil good enough. So that's why that's there. I like that forward choil. It's a saber grind, which is a flat grind that doesn't come all the way to the spine of the blade. We've got thumb studs for deployment. Those are, I believe, T6 screws. Let me double check right here. Yep, T6 screws if you want to take the thumb studs off. Access lock right here with the Omni Springs. A pretty good tension on those. I can pull it back, as you can see, with one finger on one side. It's a little stiff for that. I have to really concentrate to do that, but that works certainly with both hands. It's easy to use the access lock. I pull it loose, give it a slight swing, and it comes closed, and then I let go and do the opposite when I go to close it. Just doing it really quickly allows you to fidget with an access lock like this. It means that when the access lock is disengaged, it's very free to slide back and forth all that it wants to. It's very loose, drop shutty, as some people like to say. If you leave the access lock alone though, watch how that will move back and forth as I open the blade. So that spring tension that's pushing that bar on there is constantly pushing on the spine of the blade, which is why when you have it partway open, you know, it doesn't flop anywhere. It just stays there because there's pressure on it. It's a good access lock. I quite like it. The uh, body screws on this side, this is the show side, so you get the nice H for Harns right there. I like that a lot. We also have Harns on the, the blade there. Yeah. I'm not too fond of that. It's very dark, very in your face. At least it's not huge. 
And then on this side, they've got giant silkworm, and then Sandvik, and then the spacing's a little bit wrong. 14C, 28 space, and shouldn't be a space between the 8 and the N. Pivot area is nice. This H here shows that it's probably a fixed pivot pin, and it is, so you can take that out. I'm not going to take this access lock all the way apart, but hopefully you'll be able to see, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but the steel only comes back up to this screw, so the steel comes back like this and comes around, and the rest is all G10 at the back, so that helps keep it nice and light. G10 is very strong, so having it a screw here and a pivot screw to hold everything together, that's just fine. So on both sides, we've got that screw. We've got exposed liners on the back here with some jipping, so that gives the thumb rest area good grip. And the jipping on the spine of the blade, it's very minor jipping. It's not very deep or sharp at all. I wouldn't mind if it came out another maybe half an inch, another centimeter centimeter and a half out. That would be good to have the pressure of the thumb right there and good traction back here is okay as well. Talking more about the handle here, we've got a big belly. Index finger sits in here, pinky finger sits back here, so it locks in your grip. That's really well done. I like that quite a lot. My hand, like I said in the intro, just fits in here and it's very comfortable. Any grip is pretty good. This pull grip of a reverse grip, not the most comfortable, but you don't use this very often at all. So yeah, it's a nice knife. Pocket clip, it's a deep carry pocket clip, right and left. They've got uh, screws for it. They have to have one screw to go to, through the body screw back here, but they put the other one in there too, just to help fill it in. I wish they'd done like Google, like Google, like Ganzo, and put in a plate there. Not a big deal. Button screws on the pocket clip, I don't like it so much, but they made the pocket clip stand out just the right amount. So it's far enough away so that your pants don't get caught up on those button screws, but it's not so far that it's hot in the hand. The tip here folds flat, so it works really well to go in and out of a pocket. Let's demonstrate that right here. So the pocket clip wants to climb over and you just push it past and it goes full depth every time. Hides in there quite well. It does say Hearns again on the pocket clip here. I think that would be enough. That's nice and muted. It's not in your face. I like that. I'd rather have the Hearns on the pocket clip and then not this one on the blade. So the structure of this thing is quite good. Oh, I didn't talk about the lanyard hole. The placement for that, I don't really like all that much. I would have rather had the pocket clip, you know, moved either right or left, and then had the lanyard hole put at the end here somewhere. Maybe that body pin would have to be moved. You know, it wouldn't be super easy to change it now, but, you know, a different placement would have been good because the way it is now, you know, that sits in your hand if you've got any paracord wrapped around there, it's just going to be pushing into the flesh of your palm, wouldn't it? But right back here would be ideal. It's a decent made knife. We've got a, uh, of course, you can see this texture here. This is thin layers of yellow and black G10. And so you can see how it's milled with these bumps to sort of make it look like a body of a, like a giant silkworm caterpillar. You can also get this in solid colors, like I said. The solid colors look like they're milled differently than this. It's a little bit harder to tell, but it's similarly milled with having lines that go across. And uh, those things are pretty good. As I said, I won't be taking this apart. Access lock knives are just, they're no fun to put back together. I can usually do it, but well, always I've done it, but I just really dislike it. Very tiny bit of side to side blade play. Uh, not much at all. I can tighten that up and get rid of that. But very smooth action. Really nice. I like to test the knives as they are. I try to do nothing to them during my testing because I want to experience what it's like for somebody just getting it out of the box. I'm going to now take this knife and uh, 
go over all of the sizes, dimensions, and everything. A lot of you guys don't want to see that, but very often I've got some really nice little bits of tidbits of information that's very useful while I'm talking about the dimensions. Anyway, I'll have this on the screen while I'm doing it. When you see this disappear, I'm done with the dimensions and such. 14C 28A in stainless steel blade, like we said. Rockwell hardness around 59 for that. How sharp was it from the factory? Actually, they could have done better. I got 190 bess. 200 and less is considered sharp, so it's within the sharp range, but they could have done better at the factory. The weight of the knife, 90 grams, 3.2 ounces. Not bad. The cutting edge length, if you measured a straight line from the heel to the tip, across that way, 82.6 millimeters. That's 3.252 inches, so three and a quarter inches of cutting edge. The blade length tipped to the closest spot on the G10, 84.4 millimeters, that's 3.323 inches. The blade thickness measured behind the, the pocket thumb studs, measured behind the thumb studs right here. 3.2 millimeters, that's 0.126 inches, so just a hair over an eighth of an inch. The blade depth is biggest right here close to the heel of the blade. 23.2 millimeters, 0.913 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, you know, about two centimeters along the blade, about three quarters of an inch along. 0.53 millimeters, which is 20.5 thousandths of an inch. So 20 and a half thousandths, not bad at all. The grind angles. This is one of the reasons why it's not all that very sharp. On this side, in this middle section, 14.5 degrees. On this side, in the middle section, 28.2 degrees. But it gets worse. This side here, it starts off at 20.6. It ends at 29.7. So almost a 10 degree change along there. 9.1 degrees actually along the length. And on this side, it starts off at the tip at 20.9, 14.5, 20.5 so it goes back and forth on this one so just like most knives they're not always sharpened very well they might be sharp but they're usually not sharpened all that well 14c 28n i'd probably sharpen this thing to 18 degrees per side and use it like crazy the other lengths here the handle length 12.28 centimeters that's 4.441 inches the uh, grip area I'm not counting this forward choil this time. It's about nine and a half centimeters, about three and three quarter inches, plus the front area. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip and not the uh, protrusions of the access lock arm, just on the G10 here, 13.9 millimeters. That's 0.547 of an inch. The handle depth within the grip area, it's biggest right here. 24.7 millimeters, that's 0.9725 inches. And the depth of the knife when it's closed, the widest point that it has, again, it's right about this area, 26.2, which is 1.0315 inches. The total length of this knife is 19.75 centimeters, which is 7.775 inches. So yeah, it's a good size knife. A lot of people won't say that it's a extra, like a large, large knife, but it's sort of a little big to be called a medium size knife. Maybe it's a little bit small to be called a large size knife, but it's a very convenient size for carrying, for having in your pocket, uh, either urban or rural EDC. It's kind of funky looking. You can get it uh, in very bright colors or muted colors. By the way, how much does it cost? $37.99 US. That's the same price at White Mountain Knives, Amazon, or AliExpress. But you can get 10% off at White Mountain Knives. Right now, they've only got the bright yellow in stock, but uh, you can click the Notify Me button on any White Mountain Knives page and put in your email address and they will email you when knives come in stock. I get emails every week for stuff that I've been looking at that comes back in stock. So that's a good thing to do if you want to save a little bit of money. 
although Amazon.com has all four colors in stock when I checked just a little while ago, and you can get free shipping from that. I can't say for sure that Canada Border Services Agency will let this pass, but they do let thumb stud knives pass much more easily than flipper knives. What are my final thoughts and feelings about this knife? I like it. I really like it. Would I get maybe just the black one next time? Yeah, maybe. There's at least some cool options for different colors for this knife. It's got that really nice belly in there, so it's great for slicing into things. It's got a reasonable tip for piercing, but not really so much designed for piercing. Like I said, you can make that forward choil just a little bit bigger if your fingers are bigger. And all it is is sanding some G10. So there's glass fibers in G10. So do not breathe in the dust from sanding G10. You're asking for yourself to get some damage to your lungs if you're going to be breathing that in. The lanyard hole, not the best placement, but I'm not a lanyard kind of guy, so that's not a big deal. Right and left pocket clip, that's quite nice. It's basically ambidextrous anyways, so I don't really care which way the pocket clip goes, but at least it's available for everyone. It's a good looking knife. Fun, works well, and um, looks good. At least to me it does. If I was to take this knife apart, I would probably put it into my stone washing machine before I put it back together again. <laughs> Maybe sand off the... Uh, the words and everything on the blade itself because I'm not too fond of that because it says Hearns Enough right there and it says Hearns Enough right there so you don't need it. That's one of the things about Hearns. They like to put their name in a lot of places. They've got a number of cool knives. I've reviewed most of what they make. I still have one more knife of theirs uh, in stock that I need to review and it's a really old model, one of their original models. And then they've still got a couple more new models that I have not purchased yet. So if you want to help my channel out, consider uh, becoming a Patreon supporter. That would be much appreciated. Or you could use my links when you buy stuff. My Amazon links, that would be very much appreciated. If you go to White Mountain Knives or IntegrityKnives.com in Canada, use coupon code CCE and save 10%. I've got more links and other deals and stuff down below the video in the description section for you. Thanks for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. By the way, that's just a tiny little nick that I got on my finger here right on the inside of my finger. When I was sharpening, I wasn't being careful enough. And I got a nick there and I just didn't want blood to get on the video. That's what that's about. Have a good one. Bye for now.